Welcome. Today we dive into the chaotic warring states era and uncover the profound impact of legalism on ancient and modern civilization. Let's unravel this intriguing chapter of philosophy. Diving right into the core of what we're discussing today, let's explore the emergence of legalism amidst the political and social chaos of the Warring States period in China, a transformative era spanning from 475 to 221 BC. Legalism, a pragmatic philosophy supporting centralized control and rule by law, emerged right here and played an integral role in the rise of the Qin state, leading ultimately to the unification of China under Qin Shi Huang. At the crux of this philosophy were key figures like Shang Yang, who implemented sweeping reforms bolstering legalist teachings, and Han Fei, contributing significantly to legal traditions with his insightful legalist texts. Within the turmoil of the Warring States period, legalism took root, standing out with its distinct focus on law and centralization. However, the impact of legalism stretched beyond its contributions to state unification. It fostered a system marked by stricter enforcement and severe penalties, serving as a stark reminder of the potential pitfalls of excessive governance and unyielding adherence to law. Thus, giving us a rounded perspective on legalism's legacy, its strengths in fostering order and stability, and its drawbacks in harsh penalties and strict governance. Legalism in the crucible of the Warring States period emerged as the governing principle behind the Qin dynasty rooted in the belief of a central, authoritarian rule enforced by stringent laws and punishments, legalism diverges from the views of human nature held by its contemporaries. Where Confucius trusted in moral virtues to inspire societal harmony, legalism leaned on impartial, coercive legal systems, seeing humanity as inherently selfish and needing tight reins. This gave rise to a rule unified yet rigid under the Qin dynasty. From strict regulations to harsh penalties counterbalanced with rewards, all aimed at ensuring compliance. Yet scrutinizing legalism further, we uncover a triad of pioneers shaping this philosophy. Shang Yang, with his sweeping reforms, fortified legalist principles. Han Fei's texts, rich in legal traditions, elevated legalism as an influential school of thought. Together, these figures contributed to the philosophy that was instrumental in unifying China yet bore the pitfalls of severe governance. As we delve into their philosophies, we'll unravel the raw threads of human nature and governance that bind them and separate them across parallel lines of thought. Shang Yang's reign over Qin stand testimony to the pivotal role legalism played in restructuring China's socio-political landscape. His profound belief in centralized control led to the adoption of radical measures making the Qin dynasty one of the most powerful during the Warring States period. This was largely empowered by his strategic alliance with Duke Xiao, resulting in groundbreaking reforms that bolstered Qin's dominion. Key to these transformations were the introduction of productive agricultural policies and a unique military meritocracy that fostered loyalty and productivity. These reforms are considered instrumental to the solidification of Qin's power base, ultimately enabling the unification of China. Delving into the intricacies of governance, Shang Yang emphasized laws, standardization, and stringent punishments as crucial tenets for maintaining societal order. Each law applied as an equalizer, representing a step away from nepotism and towards a just and efficient system. His philosophy, though rigid, put forth a governance model that was transparent, strict, and in many ways, transformative. Shang Yang's vision of a united rule under strict legalities laid the groundwork that governed China's unification, carrying resonances that echoed in dynasties to come. Dive headfirst into the intricate weave of Han Feizi's influence on legalist philosophy. This thinker, noted for his incisive critique of morality, instead spotlighted law governance as the route to societal balance. His philosophies echoed through the bowls of time to infiltrate the legal reformation of the Qin dynasty, highlighting unity and efficiency as cardinal virtues of governance. Redirect our gaze to the broader philosophical tapestry and behold legalism's distinct threads within its realm. Legalism hallmarked human nature as innately skewed towards selfishness, advocating for the necessity of strict laws to maintain societal harmony. Its stern dismissal of nepotism in favor of merit is testament to its objectivity. These ideals resonated deeply with Qin Shi Huang, 
fueling his unification efforts for China. However, let's not be blind to the elephant in the room, the discussion circling the efficacy of legalism. Its authoritarianism has sparked debate, begging us to question, is it really a panacea for societal discrepancies or a masked harbinger of oppression? Legalism, emerging from the chaos of the Warring States period, advocated for stability through harsh laws and a strong centralized state. Stemming from this era, marked by disarray and discord, it offered a solution to curb what was perceived as the inherent selfishness within humanity. By enforcing strict laws and governance, legalism signified a move towards real politic, replacing the outdated feudal structure with practical authoritarian laws. Meanwhile, Confucianism contrasted sharply against this backdrop. With roots anchored in moral virtues, it nurtured a sense of righteousness in leadership and fostered ethical behavior in society. Confucianism saw human nature as innately good, viewing societal disorder not as a result of inherent selfishness, but as a lack of moral education. It proposed a education system that would nurture virtues and ethics, steering clear of blanket laws and rigid forms of punishment. The societal spheres influenced by these two philosophies were starkly different, iron-wrought order under legalism and harmonious balance under Confucianism. Looking at human relations, Confucianism stressed the importance of righteous interaction in stark contrast to the state-oriented approach of legalism. Thus, these philosophies, while coexisting in the same era, offered divergent templates for governing society and maintaining order. The rise of the Qin dynasty ushered in a shift towards legalism, leaving Confucian ideals in the dust. Shang Yang, chief architect of this transformation, established stern laws and penalties that effectively curbed dissent. Implemented to consolidate power, these measures soon became the pulse of the state, synonymous with governance under legalism. Striking at the heart of this philosophy is the premise that humans are inherently selfish, requiring rigid control systems to contain disruptive impulses. This stark departure from Confucian views crystallizes the constraints of the moral persuasion approach to governance. When we turn the lens towards the Qin Dynasty's establishment, we discern not only an echo, but an amplification of these principled convictions. To quell dissent, book burnings and draconian laws became standard. Far outreaching these, Attempts at reaching unity included an overhaul of measurement scales to a standardized structure and the orchestration of grand projects like the Great Wall. Both practical and symbolic manifestations of the state's power, these initiatives announced loud and clear the rule of the Qin dynasty, making the force of legalist ideologies strikingly clear. Legalism's approach brought about a revolution in bureaucratic growth during the Qin dynasty, setting in motion monumental changes in governance. With a keen eye for efficiency, it replaced the existing hereditary system with a meritocratic one. Officials were now promoted based on their ability, skills, and merit rather than their lineage. When they excelled, they climbed the hierarchical ladder, whereas underperformance led to their dismissal. This practice facilitated the rise of a competent administrative class which further propelled the state's efficiency. Legalism didn't stop at rewriting government dynamics. It ventured into economic reforms, introducing the standardization of currency across the Qin territory. The simplification and ease this change brought about in trade and commerce are undeniable. It boosted the economy, creating a stable environment ripe for growth and prosperity. But the philosophy's influence went even further. The Qin dynasty, guided by legalist principles, invested in enhancing its agricultural and military capabilities. These were instrumental in consolidating its control and enabling its eventual expansion. By determining stringent laws and promoting technological advancements, legalism paved the way for the Qin dynasty to command a unity and prosperity previously unseen in ancient China. The crucial impact of legalism in the Qin dynasty was laid bare in the implementation of its severe policies book burnings and scholar executions displayed not just its extreme enforcement, but a powerfully suppressive undercurrent that escalted disparities among societal classes and hindered individual mobility. By prioritizing the state over the individuals, it fundamentally challenged the Confucian values, 
punctuating the philosophical scene with a novel and, at times, tension-riddled course. A non-negotiable outcome of the Warring States period, legalism empowered the Qin Dynasty's central control, trumping the familiar tenets of Confucianism and Taoism by exploiting raw human tendencies towards selfishness. Yet, this rigorous exercise of law and punishment not only bridged propaganda and power, but ignited the flames of the 209 BC rebellion, marking a compelling backlash against the brutally realistic approach of legalism. It's evident that legalism's stranglehold on the Qin dynasty, while cementing a formidable rule, also germinated the seeds of its dissension and eventual downfall. Thus, we're reminded of the intricate dance between societal control and innate human inclination, a delicate sway that carves the course of a civilization's rise and fall. The legacy of legalism far extends the reign of the Qin dynasty, leaving imprints on the bureaucratic approaches of later dynasties. The Han dynasty, infamously renowned for its legalist bureaucracy, integrated a Confucian overlay, a strategic political move tinting the stark legalist framework with ethical nuances. A parallel evolution can be seen in the Song dynasty, where legalism formed a harmonious junction with the Confucian examination system crafting a unique blend of merit and ethical governance. The Sui dynasty, with its rigid laws and centralized power, mirrors legalist principles, echoing its essence in its strict governance methods. Diving deeper, the profound effects of legalism come alive in the tangible legacy of the Tang Code. The code imbibed legalist ideas, establishing strict penalties and emphasizing state authority, thereby strengthening centralized control. It was the epitome of legalist influence, shaping one of the most important legal texts in Chinese history. Legalism thus didn't fade into oblivion with the Qin dynasty's downfall, but continued to shape governance, whispering its principles into later dynasties and their laws. When the societal stage was fraught with discord and chaos, legalism made its entrance during China's Warring States period. Advocacy for centralized power, steadfast adherence to laws, and a unique merit-based system of governance marked its principled stand. Discernibly distinct in its advocacy for order through arbitrary laws, legalism carved its spot among rival philosophies of the time. Pioneering figures like Shang Yang anchored their faith in the practicality of this philosophy, championing groundbreaking reforms that fueled military prowess and agricultural productivity. Legalism, with its grips on the Qin dynasty, propelled the unification of China, a testament to its influential role. Yet its legacy isn't devoid of shadows. Upholding the state above the individual, it bred stringent laws curtailing intellectual and personal freedoms. Contradictions, as they say, are omnipresent. For every binding effect of legalism on the fabric of China's governance, there ensued a resistance, a rebellion. The Qin dynasty, under the whip of these severe policies, eventually crumbled, illuminating the perils of unyielding governance. However, undeniably, legalism's footprints endure in Chinese legislation and governance, a legacy enduring across millennia, paving paths for critical examination of its values in the contemporary world.